Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is episode number 86. We are talking top five Marvel movies. Now, not just your normal Marvel movies, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're talking any Marvel movie that has come out, period. So, yeah, joining me today, we have Eugene. Hello. We have Stuart. Hello. We have Amy. Morning, all. Someone has been into the coffee again. I don't drink coffee. You keep saying it, we keep not believing you. So, (laughs) anyway, this week we are covering, as I said, top five Marvel movies. So, this is any movie that has been made in the Marvel brand, not just the MCU ones. So, those of uh, those in the chat, if you want to join in, feel free to comment your your list of top five, and I will read it out for you. Um, as always, keep it in touch with the chat. So, moving right along, let's start off with number fives. I'll start by reading EJ since he couldn't join us. I have EJ and Michael's lists in front of me. Um, EJ's number five is Iron Man One. So. Overall, a decent movie. Michael has got Avengers at number five, which I totally disagree with, but that's Michael for you. He's always got it wrong. Um, moving right along. Stuart, what's your number five? Uh, my number five is... Uh, you'd be a little surprised by this. Fantastic Four from last year. Um, Stuart, you realise that we're doing a top five best movies, not a top five worst movies. Yeah. This, right? <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Oh god. Although overall the movie was bad, the act the actors that they chose for it were really, really good. It's just a poor script and Fox interfering too much. You're fired. Just just go away, you're fired. Just... Amy, what's your number five? Cap two. Captain, Captain America two. Ah, the Winter Soldier. That's a good one. I'll agree with that one. Uh, my number five is, and everyone's going to hate me for this, just as much as I hate Stuart for his choice, The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one of the rebooted Spider-Man universe. I thought, Oh, it, the Andrew Garfield movies? Yeah. I thought they were better than the original trilogy. Just oh, they, yeah, no, I'm not arguing with that. They, they just should have followed about five or more years after, if you know what I mean, sort of <laughs> real world time. Um... So yeah, so that's certainly disappointing with that, but the Amazing Spider-Man movies is my number five. Um, Eugene, you're doing something a little bit different. I'll let you explain what you're doing, and then you can do your number five. Well, I decided that being everybody else was seeing what was on the top of the list, I decided to scrape the bottom of the barrel and see what came to the surface. Well, this will be so fun. So for number... Huh? I said this will be fun. For number five, we're going to go with uh, Captain America 1990. Oh, God. <laughs> well, wow. For those who haven't seen Captain America 1990, for the love of God, look up the trailer on YouTube. You will piss your pants. It is the funniest thing in the world. Just wrong in every way. <laughs> uh. Well, because we've built ex- expectations on what we see now. Yeah, I know, but still, it's so funny. So, so funny. We need to do like a, a sci-fi movie sin sort of podcast where we review the worst movies, which sci-fi movies we can find. That would be great. Anyway, also oh, anything by Michael Bay. Yeah, anything by Michael Bay. Um, okay, uh, so everyone's done number five. Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll jump on to number four. Number four for EJ is Deadpool. Number four for Michael is Iron Man One. Now. Looking at EJ's list, I'm not surprised that Deadpool isn't higher, because I know what EJ's like. But, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll accept Iron Man and Deadpool that low for those guys, considering the rest of their list. Uh, for me, I've got Guardians of the Galaxy at number four. Woo! Because Guardians of the Galaxy is, is awesome. Just in every measurable way. Uh, Eugene, what did you find with your second scoop to the bottom of the barrel? Ah, from the bottom of the barrel in the number four slot came up X-Men 3. <laughs> oh. oh, that movie. That, that, that movie. I don't even know what to say. X-Men 3. Movie. Wow. Anyway, Amy, what did you got for your number four? Um, four one. The original Thor. I just found it completely funny. Thor got taken out by a taser. Yeah, it did have a lot of really good moments like that. Uh, Stuart, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, so the first Captain America movie. Nice. Yeah. I, a lot of people didn't like it, but I really enjoyed it because it, was, it, it, it stayed true to, to the comics very well. Yeah. And uh, I respect that. Exactly. Exactly. That definitely helps sort of rate a movie higher. Now, those in the chat, if you do want to get involved, as always, feel free to, to comment, and I will definitely read out a list if you have one. Uh, so, moving on to number three, we have, for Michael, Big Hero 6. Originally, he had Iron Man hey. 3, until I reminded him what Iron Man 3 was, and then he was like, oh god, no, kill it with fire. And I said, what about Big Hero 6? And he's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That one's awesome! So, Big Hero 6 became number three for Michael's list. Michael, for the record, I threw you out the airlock because you had Iron Man 3 in your top five. You know you deserved it. Uh, so, Eugene has Captain America 2 as his number three. Uh, Winter Soldier? No. Rating fairly high, no. so... You mean EJ? EJ. Did I say Eugene? My brain's not working. EJ has Captain America 2 at number three. And I have Deadpool Ooh. at number three. So, Deadpool climbing the ladder. Every single round, he seems to sit one place higher. Who knows if he'll make it all the way to number one on someone's list. Um... So, Stuart, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is uh, Civil War. Captain America Civil War. Yep. Cap 3 worked for us. Worked nice. Yeah. Um, really, it was a really essential movie in setting up Phase 3 of the Cinematic Universe, bringing Spidey, Black Panther, like two big players come the Infinity Wars. Yeah. So I just want to shout out to Vanilla. She, um, they have said, Winter Soldier didn't impress me uh, for some reason. I really like the first Captain America, though. Yeah. Um, for me, Winter Soldier was one of those movies that had to happen between the first Captain America story and the third Captain America story. And while I do rate it relatively high, I don't rate it top five. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, Amy... Number three. Number three is Avengers 1. The original Avengers. Yeah. yeah. It's slowly but surely climbing up the list as well. Um, and Eugene, what did, we, what did we find this time? At the bottom of the barrel this time, we found uh, Daredevil. Oh man, I'm so glad they got rebooted on Netflix just so I could delete Daredevil from my brain. Yeah, the, the movie was bad. Yeah. So, on the plus side, it gave us Electra, which, while not being the best movie in history, far from it, it's still got skin title. Just, yeah. <laughs> Happy times. Not the point. Not the point. Moving right along. Uh, so, we've all covered number three. Yep. yep. Okay, moving on to number two. And we have... EJ has Captain America 3, Winter so uh, Wow, Captain America 3, Winter Soldier. Duh, duh, duh. Captain America 3, Civil War. Um, yeah, Civil War definitely should be high up the list. It's probably one of the best movies. It only just skipped my top five list. Um, and that's only because I included uh, Spider-Man. Michael has Deadpool. Once again, Deadpool strikes back. Climbing the list. Will he be someone's number one? Who knows? Who knows? 
And for me, I've got the original Iron Man. Now, I love that movie just so much. Just for no real reason. Just I just love that movie. It's Robert Downey Jr. and the original Iron Man stuff is just awesome in every measurable sense. So, Amy, what have you got for n- number two? Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6. Oh, I love that movie. It's got Stargates in it. Just It wins because it's got Stargates in it. Uh, Stuart, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Nice, nice. Slowly but surely finding as well. <laughs> we just really, really enjoyed that movie. and it's just It was a good... It was a good balance between comedy and action. Yeah, it, it definitely was effectively Avengers in space. Everyone has made that parallel. Plus, I am Groot. Yeah, Groot. <laughs> yeah. Um, seriously, bringing Vin Diesel on and having him just say one line, I think is that is the greatest joke of that movie. It's like, I wonder who made the easiest money, Vin Diesel or Mark <laughs> Hamill episode 7. <laughs> Oh, would it be a tight race between the two? It would depend on how much money they made. Um, okay, Eugene, what's the lucky dip found this time? Uh, it looks like the Hulk came up for number two. <laughs> Hang oh, on, which version? the Hulk. The, the first of the two. Is it the one that has the, the Hulk dogs or the one that has the abomination? Actually, they're both pretty bad. <laughs> we list them, can we list them both as as a tie for number two? <laughs> why not? Sure, why not? Oh, the Hulk dogs. Oh, the Hulk dogs. Just, wow. I don't even, just, wow. <laughs> so, um, number two's done. Moving on to number ones. Wow, we are flying through this. Well, because we're not really discussing yeah. them, because everyone knows what they are. Yeah, pretty much. Fair point. It normally takes us ages to do a top five list. I have to come up with the second half of the show. Um, anyway, t- Michael has got Guardians for number one. Um, so, he finally chose a good movie. It's taken him five choices, but he got a good movie. EJ and myself both agree on number one as the original Avengers movie. So, yep, EJ, got a good choice. I like it. So, Avengers, because, come on, who doesn't like Avengers? Okay, there are a few people that say it is long and has boring moments, but they're weird. Isn't that any movie? Yeah. So, so, moving on to Stuart. Number one. Deadpool. Yay! It made it to the top of somebody's list. Jenny, uh, Jenny downloaded it um, over the weekend and we were just going to stop watching it. Oh, so good. So good in every way. I think Deadpool had made it into at least every rank the whole way to the top of that list. So, Deadpool for the win. That's not on my list because I haven't plus, seen it. Plus the, blo- plus the blooper reel is hilarious. Isn't it? Mm. Can I say that wouldn't be much difference with some of the movies of it, though? <laughs> Have you seen some of the extended scenes? Dead. Some of the extended scenes on the yes. Deadpool Blu-ray are uh, great. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, so, Amy, what's your number one? Um, Cap 3. Civil War. Civil War? Yep. I can definitely see that rating really high. That was a really good movie. I have to watch that again again. Will that be four times? I'll have to watch it again soon. I'll be out of cinema soon. Um, and Eugene, what did you scoop off the very bottom of the barrel? Fantastic Crap 4. <laughs> Which one? The last one. The most recent one? Oh, look at that. Fantastic Four from number five on Stuart's list to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> well, that again, um, <sighs> what would most people put for the latest X-Men? Yeah, in this list. Um, well, if we look at... Because I've got the the wiki up for... It's a list of films based on Marvel Comics. And I'm looking at the Rotten Tomato ratings. Um, oh, no. Oh, yeah. There's a, down the bottom of the page, there's critics and public reaction. The Rotten Tomato ratings are Captain America. Now, I don't know which Captain America, because it doesn't have a year on it. 
I can only assume it's the one from the um the nineties. The yeah, the nineties. Oh, nineties. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't have any of the extra sort of. Because I think the other Captain America is like Captain America: The First Avenger. Yeah, there it is. So, so this is just Captain America. So, it'd be Captain America from the nineties is rated at zero percent after ten reviews. <laughs> Next on the list, from the, this is going from the bottom of the barrel up. Fantastic Four from 2015 is at 9%. Electra, 10%. How the Duck, 14%. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, Aww. 17%. Man Thing, 17%. Now we, 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 the next chunk is between sort of 25 and 30%. I'm just going to read the names. I'm not going to read the percentages because that'll get really boring really quickly. Um, just reading the names. It's going to be pretty bad. You got Blade Trinity, Ghost Rider, Punisher Warzone, Fantastic Four from 2005, The Punisher from 1989, The Punisher from 2004, Fantastic Four from 1994, all rate below 30%. From 30 to 50%, um, there's only a couple of movies. You got um, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Server, X Men Origins Wolverine, Daredevil, X Men Apocalypse at 48%. And then from there, we start to to climb fairly rapidly. I'll do all the way up to 70%. Um, you got The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Blade, Blade 2, X-Men Last Stand, Hulk, Spider-Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, The Incredible Hulk. All rate between 50 and 70% in, in order. Now we start getting to the ones where it only changes a little bit. Like, every movie only ticks up by about 1% from here on out. Um, and we start with The Wolverine, Iron Man 2, The Amazing Spider-Man, Avengers Age of Ultron, Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, Iron Man 3, Ant-Man are all 80% or lower. So, we're, on to the oh. we're finally on to the last little leg. We've got X-Men is at 81, Deadpool, X2, X-Men First Class, Big Hero 6, Spider-Man... Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Captain America, Civil War, all rate 90% or lower. So we're on to the top... Let me just do a quick check. The top five, as rated on Rotten Tomato, are X-Men, Days of Future Past at 91%. Guardians of the Galaxy at 91%. The Avengers at 92%. Spider-Man 2 at 93%. And the original Iron Man rocking it all the way to the top at 94%. So, yeah. It is really interesting to see this. what the official stats are. Yeah, it is. It's especially funny on seeing what the stats are for what they pay down and how much they got back. Yeah, yeah. So, this is, this is really funny. Like, this is great. I love this. Another section of the page has got the box office gross. And if you put them in order of the amount of money brought in worldwide, it gets hilarious. Like, The Punisher, made in 91, but had, was made for $9 million. It got 533000 back. That's it. Another more. <laughs> so, the net loss of effectively $8.5 million. <sighs> and then you've got... Man Thing lost about six million dollars. Punisher Warzone lost about twenty five million dollars. Uh, it just sort of goes down and down from there. Uh, it's so funny. I think the first movie to cross relatively even was no, Electra. Didn't uh, yeah, it was Electra, and it only made about ten million over its cost. So. Well, they've hit the good notes now. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. I don't think they can put anything else but good notes at the moment. Yeah. Except if they go overboard. Yeah. So far, the, the Marvel stuff on Netflix has been really good. And the way they're treating the characters has done really well. So... Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move move along. I was hoping to have EJ on for this, but he hasn't been able to make it. Um, so I want to talk about the whole Captain America thing that's been rocking its way around the internet for the last couple of weeks. Um, 
What are your guys' thoughts on it being revealed that he's secretly Hydra? Spoilers. Too late. Everyone knows. It's on the front cover of newspapers. It's like, who... Oh, we're doing this, are we? Oh, we're doing this. Oh, that was a... See, I actually... um. I actually learned about this before the comics actually got released. Okay. I, I have a few resources, and, and I was like, Oh, you're gonna lose so many fans for this. Oh yeah, you're and gonna burn. Lo and behold. Just, just for the record, just anyone out there who hears this, don't send death threats. It's very childish. And pathetic. Just, just leave them alone. Let them do what they're going to do with the story. And if they totally screw up a character, let them crash and burn that character. So anyway, moving right along. Um, is that turn? Is that turning Cap into Hydra? What is he? Um, uh. So the the way the story goes is that. Um, Captain America's mother was actually recruited into Hydra before Cap was even born. So, Cap was raised Hydra from the beginning. And, um, managed to weasel his way in using the most crazy, crazy cover story craziness ever into being the test subject that gave him the super serum that turned him into Captain America. And then as a double agent, has spent 70 plus years destroying the thing that he works for? Something like that. So yeah. It's it's one of those sort of what the? Moments. Huh? Yeah, no. Don't like it. Yeah. So, so they're, they're basic... The, the writer that did this was actually laughed for an interview I was reading... He was laughing about the fact that he was doing this. Uh, Basically, me and the writer doesn't care. So, well, they need to do something with Kappa to to try and keep the comics relevant. But <laughs> considering the origin, that's not the right of, way of doing it. Yeah, but considering the origin of Captain America and how um, he was written before America even entered the war and was already punching Hitler in the face in the comics because the two guys that made him were both Jewish and both hated Hitler for being the fuckhead that he was. I think it's exactly. as much spitting on their legacy as anything else. And considering Captain America is meant to... This is one, one of the points EJ made. Actually, you guys talk about it for a minute. I'm going to go find EJ's post on it because EJ made a really good post on Facebook about this. Yeah, that does not work. <laughs> Unless, okay. Unless he was um, a hidden soldier, like a... Uh, Winter soldier sort of scenario? Yeah. I don't think it'd really work. Yeah. I know. I'm... Because he was so ill when he yeah, decided he, was... he wanted to be a soldier. Yeah, he was so under underqualified so to speak where the hell is this post EJ how much crap do you post obviously a lot obviously a it's lot probably what he needs to yeah <laughs> one of the pictures he's got up is uh, someone has photoshopped the hail hydra picture with Stan Lee's head and it just says hail DC comics <laughs> and then all the shock faces underneath yeah yeah <laughs> Come on, it's gotta be here somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. Did you guys see the response that um, his face, the actor that plays Captain America, whose name I just can't, for whatever reason, Chris Evans. Chris Evans gave when he was told about it. <laughs> he was not. No, happy. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, go on, Stuart. Tell the story. Um. I'm gonna find this actually, but I remember reading. It. Basically, he did. He didn't agree with the direction they were going with it. Yeah. And it was like, and it was like, this isn't what the character was made for. The character stands for you, not for the, for the freedom of the world, and 
now he's evil. That makes no sense. In yeah. Layman term. Yeah. Well, apparently the issue of, of the comic in question, you know, Captain America takes a military, a U.S. military person, throws him out of a plane, and then goes to Hell Hydra. And I'm going, that's not Captain America. Yeah. See, here's my theory, because Marvel have done a whole reboot, on all, not a reboot on all their comics. There was a comic series a very long time ago, um, before they did their first ever reboot, where there was an alternate timeline with an evil Captain America. So someone's been dimension traveling. Okay. Potentially, yes. Okay, I found his post. It's taken me a little while. Okay, so he says the this is what EJ said on Facebook. So the whole caps a Hydra agent thing that Marvel that Marvel's pulling really is bugging me, and I finally realised why. Professionally speaking, I have to give them props. I mean, it's a brilliant PR move, a brilliant way to get people discussing the comics again in light of the movies taking up so much of the limelight, you know, through, th um, there. You know, through things like this post. And it's gonna drive comic sales through the roof. The nar uh, And narrative speaking, it adds a beautifully sinister layer to everything that has come before and will come moving forward. It makes everything much more interesting. Um, so, why does it upset me so much? Because it's a betrayal. Captain Cap's always been that perfect hero for me. He stands for the American ideal, but recognizes our flaws. He's not the strongest or the fastest, but he always keeps fighting. He fights for what he believes, but will admit when he's wrong and will take his licks for it. He acts as America should in the world, as a leader, not a bully. He's a symbol of what we should all strive to be, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, or nationality. And now, at least as far as the comics are concerned, it's all been a lie. So I'm not happy. And I think that does justice to the whole sort of scenario. It's such a betrayal of his character. Such a change to how it sort of has been that... Yeah. It's just... Yes. Yeah. Complete change to what the ex... Exactly. Um, the expectations are set out to be. Exactly. And I think that's sort of the biggest issue. The biggest issue being that Captain America is meant to be that sort of... How do I put it? The guiding light. He has you always mean... been the one that's he helped found the Avengers. He helped found all these major sort of things that have helped the world on a level that you can't even sort of really put into values. And to have that sort of character that's meant to be the moral light, that's meant to represent all of the positive attributes and the struggle against the negative things, come out and say, well, actually, I've been evil all along, is such a betrayal to that core that I can understand why fans are upset. It'd be like yeah. Jack O'Neill coming out as a goal all, all all along. Or, I don't know. Which would be sort of hard because I get scanned so regularly for it. Yeah, I know. But you know what I mean. Yeah. It'd be like... Um, I'm trying to think of other references. It'd be like... Luke Skywalker turning around at the end of Episode 7 and stabbing Rey with a, with a red lightsaber. It'd be sort of one of those sort of backup what the hell moments. Yes, good shock value, good potential storyline to follow, but is it the right direction to go? That is the the question. It's sort of like a Jurassic Park. You have the technology, you have the capability, but should you? And yeah, I think that's what's unless of... yeah, unless I do a uh, dimension travel. Um, a person doing dimension jump. Yeah, it doesn't work. So I know they've done Captain Hydra before as sort of a one-shot story, but I think that was mind control or something. I can't remember. But yeah, it's just yeah, no, not liking it. So anyway, 
So, Eugene, what have we got for the models this week? For this week, um, we're going to cover the Firefly um, Cargo Crate, also known as the Loot Crate Number 2, which features Jane Cobb. Nice. Uh, this month's uh, exclusive figure is the L Little Damn Heroes Mini Master of Jane Cobb with his gun. Uh, there's also an exclusive Jane Cobb one chip coin. On the front is a nice close up shot of his head. And. Uh, it has um, his statue on the back. The coin, uh, let's see what's on here. The head of, uh, or the hero of Canton. Uh, let's see here. Uh, red Sun System. 2513 is the date on the coin. In Jane, we trust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for anyone that actually thinks in Jane we trust is a good idea. There's also a very nice uh, pin. Uh, this this time it shows Jane's gun and says, "Let's be bad guys." Nice. Uh, this month this month's exclusive sticker is a picture of Jane. Ainstown um, with the statue. Nice. And, and um, we have an exclusive um, wanted poster of Jane Cobb. Because, you know, you got to make sure that the, you know, you know what he's worth and you know, when you catch him. Yeah. And you need to take. Oh man, I just thought of the greatest thing: get fake handcuffs, take the wanted poster into a comic con that uh, what's his face is at. Uh, crap, I've forgotten his name. Deleted it from my brain because he went full right wing crazy. Adam. Adam. Adam Baldwin. Adam Baldwin. That's it. Um, is that put the the when you do your photo shoot with him, hold the poster forwards and have him sort of standing with the handcuffs on. That'd be pretty funny. Anyway, moving, uh, moving right along. There's um, the Qubit figures are included again. This time you have the chance of getting one of two different figures. You could get Shepherd Book or Kaylee. I got Kaylee. Nice. nice. Uh, and, yep. The last two items, there's a Dead Fish t-shirt, just like Jane Cobb wore on the show, and then a flask that's uh, Thrilling Heroics Rum. Nice. Now, a couple things I've been reading online is people have already been complaining about the flask. Apparently, it breaks way too easy. That sucks. Maybe just decoration. Yeah. You meant to be able to drink it, use it. Well, I don't drink that type of stuff either. But they apparently the flask breaks so easy that somebody already said they had to fix theirs. That really sucks. Yep. And I was looking at um, on Evil Bay and. People are really gouging the prices on these things. They're charging like twenty-five bucks a shot for the the little cubit figures. Wow! Because these, and they wanted a um, hundred and fifty dollars for just the just the the box, the full set of everything from this month's box. Wow! Three hundred, three hundred for last month. The last one and this one. That's crazy. Yeah. That to me is just saying we're going to gouge the prices. Yep. It's like we're going to order 10 of these things 
and sell off a few and pay rent for the year. Yep. Yeah. But that's this month's hobby, this this week's hobby report from Perry County Hobbies. Right. So, Stuart has just informed me that he has a topic we're talking about, which is weird because it's Stuart and he doesn't normally do topics, so. <laughs> uh, well, just a lot of interesting news has popped up overnight. Uh, one of the major ones is John Boyega is going to be in Pacific Rim 2. Ooh, nice. Don't... See, in Pacific Rim 2, to me, sort of feels like Independence Day 2. It's the sort of thing where they don't really need to do it. But they but want to. It's money. Lots and lots and lots of the monies. Speaking of Pacific Rim, really quickly, I got I was in um, the middle of Brisbane at the Toy World in there. The one that has oh, all the... Oh, the one in the city? Yeah, the one that has all like the models and stuff. They've yeah, that's got cool. One of the one of the aliens. The, the hammerhead yeah, model thing the that's cages. like... The kaiju's like a foot tall. Man, that thing looks cool. Oh, yeah. No, they have some really cool collectibles in there. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, E3 kicks off next week. Oh. Somebody's not getting any sleep. No, the worst thing is I've got to fly down to Sydney two days after it finishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, Stuart. We... Crap. We love you for all of the destruction you do to yourself for us. Oh, well, to be to be honest, it's not too bad actually. Yeah. So the the only really bad panel is the Microsoft panel is at two thirty. The rest are pretty decent. The rest is like six a.m., twelve p.m., five a.m., six a.m., eleven a.m. I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. So it's a lot better than last year. Last year was just no, yeah, no, thank you. Everything was the middle of the night last year. I remember that. That was hilarious. Got you on the podcast. You like that. <laughs> Like, Stuart, are you dead? Ah. Oh, I was beyond dead. Mm. And there's already a couple uh, interesting things getting leaked prior to E3 coming out. Um, Just about to say, what uh, are you looking Des- forward to at E3? <laughs> I'm looking forward to a lot of things at E3. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're getting a new Dead Rising game. It's basically like a zom- uh, it's a zombie game where you, where you go... It's like a zombie... How do I describe this? <laughs> it's not It's not like it's a zombie game, but it's not like there's like a story to it. It's really weird. It's, uh, it's a zombie game. <laughs> it, it's been like... It's a long-standing series that's been around for a while. Uh, Watch Dogs 2. Don't really care for the first Watch Dogs, but hopefully they make the second one better. Yeah. I'm trying to think um, of what you'd call this, um, the guest list for this Nova, for Sydney Nova. All over the place? <laughs> oh, you want to know, you want to know, what, you want to know what's got Supernova in the bad, in the bad books? Oh, we'll get okay. to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. It's like every year they have to do something that puts them in the bad books. Last year it was Adam oh, Baldwin, they... and this year it's... This year? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> poor Danny. Poor, poor Danny. Anyway. No, not poor Danny. His fault for doing it. Oh yeah. Um. So this is cool. Uh. So since DC had their their rebirth, so their re their their reboot, uh, the Green Arrow um uh, uh, rebirth one actually is going to a reprint. So far, they believe they sold ninety thousand copies of it. Wow. Which would make it the highest, though the best selling issue of Green Arrow in history. Sad. Well, you could probably blame the TV show for that one. <laughs> here's a here's a point of comparison. Um, two thousand one, when they did um, the new Fifty Two reboot, the Green Arrow then sold fifty six thousand copies. This one has smashed that out of the park. Oh yeah, like I said, you can blame the TV show for that one. <laughs> the, the TV show that the movies hate and want nothing to do with. Which, to be honest, oh, speaking, I am... speaking of the TV shows, uh, Stephen and Mel kind of hinted at something that may happen with the, the crossovers. Yeah. Uh, supposedly we're going to have a Fortnite crossover. Oh, wow. I saw something about... Oh. What was that, Eugene? I said I've seen something about that too, and it was somebody else that said something about it. Which I think that'll be fantastic for them to, to cross all of them together. Oh, all four shows. It's just like, oh, well, 
that's that's how you get your viewership up. Oh yeah. Speaking of viewership, uh, Supergirl announced that in the first two episodes, we're actually going to see Superman's face, which means there's there has been casting out to try and do it. Personally, yeah. I think just bring Tom Welling back. Just go full circle. Yeah. If it happens, great. If it hap- if it doesn't happen, yeah, it doesn't. she's a damn good Superman. Yeah. <laughs> now, what what I think they should do, and you, you're all going to disagree with me on this one, and they should propose Christopher Reeve, and they won't they won't do it. Not in a million years will they do it. But for the love of God, use movie Superman. No, they already said they're not going to use. There's there's already confirmed that Henry Cavill's not going to do it. I know. I'm just saying, they need to. They need to put their differences aside and bring those two universes together. If they can do that, then I guarantee you the next Batman, Superman, whatever in that universe outing will is going to go way better. Yes, there will be creative conflicts between the TV show and the movie stuff. Won't disagree with that for a second. But they still need to put those differences aside in order to stand a chance at challenging Marvel with the next movie. Ooh, hiccups. With the next movie, um, and that because that Marvel's that passing me. over. Yeah. Oh, Marvel is just Marvel is no contesting um, DC in almost every field. The only place that DC is winning is the TV shows. The Arrowverse is way better than Shield. There's, there's almost no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Flash is admittedly better than Arrow, but that's beside the point. Um, the, the Arrow TV first versus Agent Carter and Shield, no contest. Arrow wins, hands down. It's the only place that they they're winning. They need to look at that and go, why is this doing so much better? And then use that as their stepping stone to the movies and to everything else, and to grow it out from there. And not doing that, I think, will be the biggest mistake DC will make. And they will crash and burn because of it. But anyway, ranting aside, moving right along. Stuart, back to the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we uh, may have a, a, a name for the Season 5 villain of Arrow. By oh. any chance, is it Target Man? He's just a dude with a giant target. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Ten, uh, the reports uh, tenderly says the name is Anton Church, and that it is... could just be it could just be it could just be a cover name. Definitely sounds like he, a cover the name. name does, yeah, it sounds like a cover name because nothing exists in the DC comics with that name. So, however, this is going to be the first super. This is going to be the first villain we've had in a while that won't have powers. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're leaving the whole. Uh, yeah. the uh, the whole supervillain side and going back to someone without powers, kind of like season one. Nice. I miss those Let's days. See how long before they blow up the city? Yeah, just, just. At this point, <laughs> I'm almost <laughs> ready for just to say, blow up the city, be done with it, move away from Arrow and towards Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. And Supergirl. The, the, the best thing I find about this report, uh, um, we are getting off comicbook.com, is the comments. The best comment is, the show has a team of villains. The rioters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I disagree with that? <laughs> That's quite possibly one of the best comments I've seen on a news report, on a news report ever. <laughs> that is pretty good. But you think about it. How often do they nearly destroy the whole world? Yeah. And they, they sort of seem exponentially more creative in their destruction of the whole world. So, anyway. What else we got, Stuart? Uh, that's about it. Everything's kind of gone quiet, so... We have, um, supernova issues. Um, what about we'll the, that. What about that news article I linked you to a little bit earlier? Star Wars Battlefront 3? Tag to it on Facebook. No? Stuart, you're fired. Um, so let's move on to Supernova until Stuart could find that news article that I linked him to. 
basically what it means, what, what's happening is Star Wars Battlefront 3, which was, I'm pretty sure was like a fan-made uh, project on Steam, is now going to be rebranded um, oh, Galaxy in Conflict or something like that. And it's still going to be all Star Wars based assets, and it's going to be released on Steam for free. Oh, is this the Bal? Is this the Battlefield? Yeah. Yes. I saw. I saw. I saw, uh, heard about this a few days ago. Yeah. I was like, "Ooh, I wonder how long before it gets shut down by Disney." <laughs> so, but well, uh, apparently, the Valve guys are behind, are okay with it. So. If the Valve guys are okay with it and they're willing to brave Disney's shutting them down, um, then maybe there's some backdoor deals between Valve and Disney we don't know about to allow it to go ahead. So, who knows? But yeah, it's going to be a I free the, Star Wars this... game for PC released through Steam, so it's going to be great. Yeah, I'll have to keep it up when that comes out, so I'll yeah. definitely give that a try. Definitely. Definitely link me to that. There. So let's move on really quickly. Supernova and Oz Comic Con are both happening this weekend in Australia. Don't know why I went for a weird accent for that, but sure. And March is this coming week. And what was that, Eugene? Comic Con in my area this coming week. Comic Con, Comic Con everywhere. Conventions all around. So, oh, oh, oh! Actually, I have a big Comic Con news uh, story that broke over the weekend. Oh, yep. Yeah. That may ruin um, that may ruin um, uh, Marvel fans. Oh God. So, uh, Chris Evans was at a convention over the weekend, and one stupid, stupid fan in their Photoshop decided to just go up and kiss him without even asking. Oh no. <sighs> You aren't meant to kiss the guests. If you, you can ask and say yes, but <laughs> and if they say yes, then it's fine. But you can't just do that. Yeah. yeah the worst that's... thing is Chris Evans like was is like kind of got anxiety and stuff. So yeah. it may he may not do any more conventions ever again, which would suck. Yeah. Fuck you, random fan. Fuck you. Chris, we love you. Please, I'll more than happily help you if you ever come over here. And I promise you, Stuart will not kiss you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have Loki. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see the picture of... It was popped up on my Facebook the other day. Of, um... It's Cap and Bucky, the actors in the back. And in front of them are two people cosplaying as Cap and Bucky making out. And they're just sort of... They've both got this sort of confused what the hell is going on look on their face. And the two in the front of the picture are just making out. It's like... It's like... What just happened? <laughs> so, yeah. There's another funny uh, shot I saw of. Uh, and this is hilarious. So it was... um, It was Sebastian, Jan- Sebastian Stan and Chris Evans, uh, Bucky and Cap. <laughs> in front of them, in the photo, is a Bucky and Cap making out. Yeah, he just, he just said that. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, is it that the one? Okay, that's what I'm talking Sebastian's about. Sebastian's face that. Sorry, I know. I, I blanked. Uh, so yeah. Sebastian's face in that is just priceless. Yeah, I know, right? It's just like, what the f- is going on? But uh, then again, they shouldn't really be surprised. Yeah. I'd hate to say. Alright, so. Let's move on really quickly to the Oz Comic Con versus Supernova guess. Now, I was wrong. Supernova is next weekend. Not this weekend. That's what weekend. I thought, because I'll be going down next weekend for it. Yeah, so... Oz Comic Con is in Melbourne, Australia, from June 11, June 12th. And they've got themselves a fairly decent lineup. Um, there is a long list of people here. So I'm just going to do the, the film and TV guys. So you got Rachel... Lutrell, a.k.a. Taylor from Stargate Atlantis. Paul McGillian, a.k.a. Dr. Uh, wow, I can't believe I forgot his friggin' name. <laughs> uh, I'm horrible. I'm so sorry, Paul. You're awesome. Why have I forgotten his name? 
Oh, oh. Just, 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 he blows up. Oh, I'll Carson speak, Beckett, speak Dr. Your... Carson Beckett. I got that. Okay, yeah. It took me a minute, but I got that. I'm just going to interrupt you quickly. Uh, for those wanting to go to Oz Comic Con, Brisbane, and Sydney, tickets go on sale next week. Yeah. Ooh, so, so we should really be um, having which our eyes sucks out. sucks for me. <laughs> So, so I am definitely getting it? my tickets. Why couldn't they have done it in July after Sydney? Why? why? Because they hate you. Uh, anyway. Because no. they're at war with Supernova. Um, I know. Yeah. I think a lot of people are now. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll cover that right at the end. Um, so we've got David Anders, who I don't recognise. David Guju... I... How the hell... Let me jump on it. How is that a name? G I U N T O L I. Let me jump Gion on and Tolly? say it for you. Yeah, that works. Let's do it, do the thing. Um, they've got Callum Blue, who is awesome. We've got Robert Patrick, who is spectacular. You will know him from um, Scorpion as well Scorpion. as, if I'm not mistaken, Terminator? Yes, Terminator 2. He was the T 1000. Yeah, he was the. Yeah. Wow, the T 1000 is getting old. Um, and this is the reason why I hate people in Melbourne more than anything else in the world. John Barrowman is going to be there. Hate all of you. Barrowman, err. Ingrid Oliver is going to be there. Don't know who that is. Timothy... Oh, she plays, um, the... She plays, um... The, she plays, um, Osgood. Oh! Oh! Doctor Who. Wow, she looks gorgeous in that photo compared to Doctor Who. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, anyway. Moving right along. Lucy Lawless is going to be down there? Wow. Only on the Saturday. Only on the Saturday, I know, but still. Timothy Omanson? Yeah, he's got a pointy chin beard, like he's from, like, I don't know, the Renaissance or something. Um, Well, he kind of really stars in the the, um, ABC TV series Galavant. That'd be why. Um, Jake Abel, Samuel Anderson from Doctor Who, Jed Brophy, Brophy, something like that. Yeah, he's one of the dwarves. Yeah, Monica Real, my brain, it looks familiar, but I can't place her in anything. Voice actor for Bomber, and multiple other things in Uh, anime. That's where I know her from. She was up here not that long ago. Rose McIver, who I can't yes. place. She's she's um main protagonist in Eye Zombie and is also the yellow Power Ranger in RPM. Ah, that'd be why I don't I can't place her. Um Stephen Hunter Sunday, who I'm pretty sure was a dwarf. Yes. Okay, last but not least we have Dana Delorenzo. God damn it, stupid crazy yeah. names. <laughs> um she's only gonna be there on Saturday. Eliza Taylor. Yeah, she currently is starring in um, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Nice. It's a really good show. Why is Ash using his Pokemon against the Evil Dead? <laughs> Fail majorly? This could be hilarious. Um, Eliza Taylor. Dan. Taylor. In... Not Taylor, Taylor. Taylor. Sorry, brain be no working. Yeah, she currently stars in um, The 100. I knew I recognised her from somewhere. Dan Ewing, and last but not least, we have Tim Pocock. Just, wow, the teasing he would have had growing up, just saying. Moving, so that's all of the the film and TV. There's a ton of other people going um, from comics and stuff like that. So that's Adelaide Oz Comic Con in only a couple of days. So no, that's Melbourne. Melbourne Oz Comic Con in a couple of days. My bad. I'm tired. My brain's not working. Okay, so then we've got... Now, this is what they're up against. This is Sydney, Perth, Supernova. This is the weekend after and the weekend after that. Um, wow, well, I'd better be really quick about this one. We've got... Yeah, the... Far out. There was a lot of people on this list. Those, oh, yeah. I'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way up. I think it'll be faster. Um, we've got <laughs> Christopher Sabat and Sean Smeal from Dragon Ball Z and all sorts of other things. Whatever you do, do not mention Dragon Ball Z Bridge to Sean. He is he hates it with a absolute vengeance. Chris, on the other hand, loves it. So, yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Don't mention it Seriously? to Sean. Sean spits a fucking dummy and gets really angry if you mention a bridge. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. I've seen panels of him where he like he says he watches it and stuff. No, no. You're thinking Chris. Chris Chris watches it. Chris likes it. Chris is Vegeta, right? Yeah. Oh, good. I can make him do the... Uh, I can make him do the punch me in the dick line. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we've got <laughs> Jeremy Shana from... He's, Adventure fin- Time. From Adventure Time, Troy Barker, uh, Baker. Wow, really? Yeah, Troy Baker, uh, his voice, uh, he's been in a lot of things. Oh, yeah, a lot of things. Dean. Okay, Stuart, take over. My brain is just not wording the Hagland. English. Haglund. Yep. He was, in the, he was in the original X Files. Yeah, and he's going to be in Sydney only. You've got Jan- John Garrett, who seemed to be at every convention. <laughs> <Just> every, <laughs> every convention. Um, he loves us. Oh, he does. Hey, at least it's not Christopher Judge. He's at, like, every con as well, usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't necessarily say why he is at every con, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, then you've got Benedict Samuel, who is from The Walking Dead, who's only going to be at Sydney. You've got Jace, uh, Jason David Frank. Woo! The Green Ranger is going to be at Sydney. John Noble from Lord of the Rings is going to be at Sydney. Jaden Ryan from Cheese TV. Woo! They're awesome. They're going to be in. Uh, going to be. Yes, I get to meet them. <laughs> um, did you end up getting that picture? Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. So it'll then, be nice to actually get to meet them and talk and stuff. Exactly. Then you've got Stephen Kapicic. There's lots of eyes. It's I see off into the distance. He's the voice of Colossus from Deadpool. Yeah, he's Colossus in Deadpool. You've got Brianna Hell. Hildebrand. Um, that one. It was um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead in Deadpool. So we're uh, getting we're getting photos with both of them. So yeah. Well, Ex- I... expect the photo spam off to Sydney. <laughs> well, Stuart, I'm gonna have to do a run up to your place with my Deadpool Blu-ray so I can get you to get them signed for me. Um, Just make sure you give me money. I'll give you money. You know I'm not. No, seriously, I like I really don't have much left. Yeah. <laughs> we spent 570 bucks on photos and autographs. So Eugene Simon from Game of Thrones and a few other things. Um, Peter blah 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 from Supergirl uh, Yep. I'm uh, actually looking forward to uh, I know Johnny likes it for Twilight but I'm looking forward to gorilla, to like picking his mind about Supergirl and stuff right, so let's just keep keep going Taylor yeah. Hold yep, Ochlin that one Brian Krause Holly Mary Combs Shannon Doherty the last three are all from Charmed and they're all yep. awesome people um, then we've got Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings. Oh man, I, I've got to give him my Lord of the Rings stuff as well, apparently. Um, <laughs> Juliet Landu from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Landau. 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 Whatever. James Masters, who is awesome in every way, shape, and form. Oh, he's and fantastic, dude. Travis Fimmel, who is awesome in every way, shape, and form. Yes, um, can't wait to get a photo with him. So I'm actually a huge Warcraft fan. Speaking yeah. of which, I get to go watch the Warcraft movie tonight in a, in a preview screening. Nice. <laughs> so anyway, shout out to Harrisburg Comic Con. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through the list of people who are going to that. If you're in, um, if you're in the area, actually, no, I'll let Eugene cover it really quickly. Eugene, you've got about thirty seconds. I'd just like to remind our listeners that Perry County Hobbies will be at Comic Con this weekend, and would like. Thank you to come out and say hello. Yep. So, those in the area and those who aren't, tra- uh, check out Harrisburg Comic Con. Um, it's definitely going to be worth it. And go over to say hello to Eugene. Say, we listen to you on the podcast. That host, David Guy, is a pain in the ass. And he will definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you. Um, so, so, that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll cover the Supernova incident like a better way of putting it next week, sort of kind of cooked off all the time reading the people who are doing the things. Coming. Yeah. Um, so we'll cover that next week. It's, yeah, it's one of those, one of those things. Silly Danny. I'll, I'll give a wrap up of her, her Comic Con next week too. Yep. All right, so that's it for this week. Make sure you check out Garrison7 on Facebook for something awesome that is dropping today. Um, I can't tell you what, but it's going to be awesome. Check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi, facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for your sci-fi uh, related and podcast related news. Check out facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom for the TV show I'm working on. It's going to be great. Um, all We keep posting all sorts of cool stuff up there. Check out, I already said check out Garrison 7. Check out Nobility of the Series. It's awesome. It's done by EJ who couldn't quite make it this week. So until next time, we will catch you then. 
Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yes, I got it done. With ten seconds left. Ha ha ha. Da 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 da. Four. <laughs> I never get it done on time. I never get it done on time.